Before moving on to biology, it is important to review units of measure with regards to radiation. This is especially important for technologists who started working in the profession before 2014. As the full change to standard international units did not occur until 2014 and was not fully changed on the ARRT examination until 2017. The term exposure is one of the most misused words in the field of radiography. We talk about exposure when referring to ionizing in the patient. The scientific definition is really about ionization in the air. The British unit, you may recall, is the Rentgen, named for the scientist who discovered these unique rays. The standard international unit is coulomb per kilogram. Exposure in a formula is given the identifier X. Exposure, or X, is based on the response produced when X-rays interact with molecules in air ionizing those atoms. Measurement of this ionization is performed using a dose meter called an ionization chamber. The chamber contains a given quantity of air at a precise humidity, temperature, and pressure. When introduced to a given quality and quantity of X radiation, the ionization chamber can produce a readout of the exposure in the air. This exposure reading helps us to calculate other methods of measuring or expressing radiation dose. The gray is the standard international unit of measure for radiation dose. The British equivalent unit is RAD, R-A-D. R-A-D stands for radiation absorbed dose, and in a formula, gray is expressed as D for dose. Because radiation dose in diagnostic radiography is relatively low, smaller units such as the milligray are more often used, and occasionally the centigrade. Milli is one one thousandth of a gray, and centi is one one hundredth. To find milligray, we multiply one thousand times gray. For example, point zero 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 one gray times one thousand equals one milligray. The gray, or absorbed dose, indicates the energy that the patient actually receives from a given exposure. It represents the amount of absorbed energy that may cause biological damage to the patient. The gray is used to determine effective dose and equivalent dose, which are expressed as sieverts. The siever replaces the British unit of REM, which stands for Rentgen Equivalent Man. There are two different things being measured here. One is how radiation affects a patient according to what type of radiation they are exposed to. The other is how radiation affects a patient according to what tissue type has been exposed. We know that not all radiation has the same quality factor. The quality factor is expressed as a weighting factor by radiation type, or W underscore R. We also know that not all tissue is equally sensitive to radiation exposure. The tissue sensitivity is expressed as a weighting factor by tissue type, or W underscore T. We will discuss this further on subsequent slides. 
Note, as with the gray, units and diagnostic levels are small. So millisievert or centisievert would be more common. The conversion from sievert to millisievert and centisievert are calculated in the same way as we discussed with gray. Not all sources of ionizing radiation are created equal. Likewise, not all types of ionizing radiation are in waveform or part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They could be particulate radiation. Unlike radiation on the EMS, particulate radiation has a mass. The higher the mass, the shorter the distance it will travel. Because of this, the higher the mass, the higher the quality factor of the radiation will be because it will travel less distance through the patient, meaning more energy will be deposited inside the patient. Here is a chart of the quality factors of a few examples of ionizing radiations. Both X-rays and gamma rays are on the EMS and have a quality factor of 1. Beta particles are particulate but of low mass. Therefore, they will cause a similar biological effect to X-rays and gamma rays. Thermal neutrons have a quality factor of 5 and alpha particles 20. This tells us that alpha particles most often inhaled or ingested, have the highest biological effects. Effective dose is expressed in units of sievert. To calculate the effective dose, the gray must first be determined and then multiplied by the radiation weighting and is expressed in the formula sievert equals gray times weight or EGD equals gray times weight. As discussed, not all tissue responds equally to radiation. We will learn later what exactly determines how sensitive radiation different tissues are. Here we have a chart with just a few tissues listed for this discussion. The higher the weighting factor number, the more sensitive they are to radiation. Gonads have the highest sensitivity with a weighting factor of 0.20. The cortex or surface of bone is only 0.01, about 20 times less sensitive. To radiation. Effective dose tells us how likely a patient is to experience biological effects based on the tissue type in the irradiated area of the body. Effective dose is expressed as EFFD, and the unit of sievert is used as the unit of measure. Like equivalent dose, we first must know gray. The calculation would be sievert equals gray times weight or EFF, effective dose, equals gray times weight. The newer term used when talking about radiation exposure is KERMA. KERMA stands for Kinetic Energy Released in Matter. KERMA is also associated with and used to express ionization in air, as in air KERMA, or milligray air. The term can also be used when talking about tissue, as in tissue KERMA, or milligray tissue. Regardless of whether we are talking air kerma or tissue kerma, 
the unit of measure is still gray. Let us now direct our attention back to the biology of radiation responses. Here is a quick review on one slide. We already discussed the interaction of radiation with the atom when we learned about the various interactions with matter. Understanding this is important because the atom is the building block of the human body. Atoms of the same structure come together to form molecules. Groups of similar molecules make up tissues. Groups of similar tissues make up an organ, and groups of organ make up the body system. We also know that radiation is ionizing and can cause biological effects to atoms, which can ultimately affect the structure, cell reproduction, and function of the cells that make up the tissues, organs, or system. There are three characteristics of ionizing radiation that determine the amount of energy that's transferred to a patient's tissues, charge, mass, and energy. As radiation passes through the patient, some of the energy is lost and deposited inside the patient. The average energy deposited per unit of length of travel is called linear energy transfer, or LET. This is calculated by dividing the total energy deposited by the total length of travel. LET is expressed in units of kiloelectron volts, or KEV, per micron. The rate of transfer in diagnostic radiography levels of exposure is 3 kiloelectron volts per micrometer in soft tissue. Radiation is characterized according to its linear energy transfer, low or high. Radiations on the electromagnetic spectrum are low LET radiation sources. High LET radiation sources include particulate radiations such as ions from the nucleus and alpha particles. Thinking back to radiation weighting, we can also say that the higher the weighting factor of the radiation type, the greater the linear energy transfer. It is also important to note that the higher the LET, the greater the chance of biological damage and damage to the DNA. Biological damage produced by exposure to radiation increases as the LED to radiation increases. Two exposures to two different types of radiation will likely produce two different biological effects. Even then, nothing is predictable or guaranteed. The relative capability of radiation exposure causes the biological effect. The term used to express this is RBE, or Relative Biological Effectiveness. The RBE of the type of radiation being used is the ratio of the dose of a reference radiation. Diagnostic exposure at 250 kVp of x-rays to the type of radiation being used. For example, using the formula RBE equals dose in gray tissue from 250 kVp of x-rays, the reference dose, divided by the dose in tissue gray of the test radiation. If a patient were exposed to 5 gray of a test radiation, and it is known that it would take 20 gray of X radiation at 250 kVp to produce the same response, we would divide 20 
the reference exposure, by 5, the test exposure, given a RBE of 4. This means the test radiation is four times as likely to produce the same biological effects as x-rays. At the molecular level, there are two classifications of ionizing radiation interaction, direct and indirect. Indirect is more common. Direct is more damaging. Direct image is the result of X-ray photons directly interacting with the macromolecules of a cell, damaging vital biological material. Indirect is related to the amount of water within cells. X-ray photons interact with water, ionizing the molecule, resulting in a free radical that is created and can ultimately damage DNA. This process is known as radiolysis of water. Direct interaction involves a direct hit to the DNA, RNA, proteins, or enzymes of the cell. For example, when radiation directly ionizes enzyme molecules, biochemical processes that depend on that enzyme may not occur within the cell, leading to cell death and, potentially, to further chemical changes within the cell. Both direct and indirect interactions can result in damage to DNA strands. Damage to DNA can be repaired, but could also lead to a genetic mutation. DNA carries all of our genetic information about each tissue of the body. Damage to DNA can lead to improperly functioning cells in somatic tissue and to damage of genetic codes in tissue, which can be passed on as hereditary traits. Damage can be to a single strand of DNA or to a double strand. Double strand breaks can be close together on the same rung or spread further apart. DNA can be repaired. All cells have repair enzymes to help limit or prevent permanent damage to DNA. Double strand breaks are not as easily repaired as single strand breaks. If repair does not take place, the DNA chain can further separate and threaten the life of the cell. Double strand breaks occur more frequently at higher LET types of radiation exposures. There are two basic classifications of cells in the body, somatic and genetic. Genetic cells are germ cells or reproductive cells. Somatic cells are everything else. In the following slides, we will be discussing deterministic and stoastic responses. Deterministic are early tissue responses. Stoastic are late tissue responses. Cells can have an early response or a late response. For instance, Skin burns due to radiation exposure are early tissue responses. However, a skin cancer caused by exposure to radiation would be a late tissue response. Both involve somatic cells. Likewise, a reduction in the number of sperm due to a radiation exposure is an early response but a genetic mutation due to radiation exposure to the germ cells is a late tissue response. Both involve genetic cells. There are two basic types of radiation responses we will discuss, deterministic and stoastic. Deterministic responses are also referred to 
as early tissue responses. All deterministic responses have a threshold dose or a safe dose. This is the dose at which one would not see the response occur. After that threshold dose has been crossed, the severity of the response increases proportionately to the dose that is received. For instance, because ultraviolet rays are on the electromagnetic spectrum, let's use them as an example. If you are at the beach without sunscreen, there is a certain amount of time you can be exposed to the sun without getting a sunburn. However, once that time has passed, your skin begins to burn. The longer you spend in the sun, after the burn response starts, the worse the burn. The same holds true for exposure to radiation. The takeaway here, it has been determined that there is a safe dose for all deterministic responses to radiation. Once that safe dose has expired, the response will be evident, and the higher the dose of radiation, the more severe the response will be. Also, deterministic responses are cumulative. The dose does not have to be received all at once. Scholastic or late responses have no threshold dose. This means there is no safe dose. It is difficult to measure these effects at very low doses, mostly because patients are exposed to other chemicals and products that can also cause stoastic responses. So it is impossible to pinpoint the cause. We do know, however, that the probability or likelihood of a stoastic response increases with the amount of radiation a person is exposed to. This is also cumulative. Efforts have been made to try to track patient dose through dose reporting, but it is inconsistent when procedures are carried out across various facilities. There are two types of stoastic response, genetic effects, and carcinogenic or cancer-causing effects. Another important radiobiology concept is oxygen enhancement ratio, or OER. Aerobic cells, or cells that are highly oxygenated, are more sensitive to radiation. This concept is sometimes used during radiation therapy treatments. Patients are placed in hyperbaric chambers to enhance oxygenation of cells prior to radiation therapy treatments. This allows cancer cells to be killed more efficiently. OER is defined as the ratio of hypoxic or low oxygenated cells to the aerobic dose needed to produce the same biologic effect. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our all access pass where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.